So this next uh, MySQL video is about mathematical functions, numerical functions, working with numbers. Very similar to what we did with string functions, there is a long list of possible functions that you can use when working with numbers. When your columns, the data that you're getting out of the tables is numerical in nature, lots of stuff we can do. So let's take a look at some of the examples. Now, if you've been following along with the series, you've already got the data. If you want some sample data to follow along with me, I've got this code gist. I've got the link in the description so you can download the zip, expand it, take the SQL file, and then import it. So if you go to your database that you're working with, click on the import tab, you can click on choose file to uh, import that SQL file, click the go button, and it will create the tables, genres, movies, people. So most of the work we're doing with peop uh, the movies table, this video will be just the same. We're going to work with just the uh, numerical values that we've got inside of here. We've got year and genre and movie ID, three numerical columns, so we can use those. All right, so let's take a look at some of the things that we can do with mathematical and numerical operators. Okay, um, starting with uh, converting between decimal values and integer values, if you've got a value that has decimals inside of it. So let's say rand. Now rand this is going to create a random number between 0 and 1. So if I run this, there we go. So for every one of the rows that were inside of there, I have a number. Now I can take this number, which is a decimal number, and I can convert it to an integer. And there's three possible methods for doing that. One of them is the round function. So we can put rand inside of round run that. There we go. And I'm going to get zero or one for each one of them. If you want to always round down, here, let's make this rand times 10. That way I'm going to get a, zero, a value from um, zero up to 9.9999. So we'll run this again. There we are. Get a little bit more distribution between the numbers. Now we can, if we want, change this value so that instead of always going up or down, we can say, I always want to round down. That's what the floor method does. It'll take a decimal value and it always rounds down. So here, it doesn't matter if I get zero or one as the result, this is always going to round it down. There we go. So we've got zeros for absolutely everything. If I use the seal function, this is short for sealing, it always rounds up. So we've got round for up or down, depending on whether it's greater than or less than 0 0.5. We've got floor, we've got ceiling to always round down or always round up. Uh, there's methods for degrees and radians if you want to do conversion back and forth between them. So let's say I call the radians function and I put in the number 90, this is going to give me the number of radians that are in 90 degrees. And let's do another one here, radians in 180 degrees. There we go. And you'll notice that this is pi. In half a circle, there is pi radians, 3.14 radians. If I did 360, I would get 2 pi as the value. This is half pi. Okay, so we've got radians. There's also degrees. So if I take one of these numbers, and I put it inside of here, we run that. There we go. So pi Pi radians converted to degrees gives me 180. 180 degrees converted to radians gives me pi. Simple enough. Okay, so that's uh, degrees, radians, ceiling, floor, round, uh, all the trig functions, sine, cosine, um, tangent, arc sine, arc cosine, arc tangent, arc tangent 2. So if you've done any work with JavaScript, these are all the same methods that you would have inside of JavaScript. 
um, there's a CRC function actually, which um, has a limited use case, but it's something that if you ever needed it, can be very valuable. If you need to do the CRC, the cyclical redundancy calculation, um, to get a 32-bit number from some expression, some value. So let's say I take the, um, I will take concatenate the movie title and the director's name and the genre ID. I'll take those three fields concatenated together, no spaces in between them, and I'm going to do a CRC calculation on those. So let's see what we get back as our CRC value. There we go. So these are the CRC 32 numbers from all the different concatenated values of those. So if you ever need to do this on a HTML file or something like that, you can take the file contents and run the CRC 32 calculation on it. There it is. Uh, square root, modulus, absolute uh, value, so the sort of positive value of whether it's positive or negative, you can strip off the sign so you get what's left over, the, the number itself. The, uh, there's a power method. You want to take one, power to the pow one number to the power of another. So you can do pow or power. They're aliases for the same command. And we can take genre ID to the power of two. There we go. So for all of them that are one, it will be one. For the ones that are two, it'll be four. And then five to the power of two is 25. Those are the only numbers that we have inside there for genre ID, one, two, and five. Um, there's a truncating. You can truncate a number to a certain number of decimal places and uh, or a conversion. There is a convert method. And with the convert method, so conv or convert, you can use either one. Take your number, so genre ID. Then there's two other arguments. The first one is, what is the base currently? Well, this is a base 10 number, and I want to convert it into a hexadecimal number, so base 16. We'll just call it hex. So there's all my genre IDs in hexadecimal and they are all going to be the same because that's really not going to make a difference with those. Um, here, we'll do a, we'll edit this in line. We'll do it to a binary. There we go. So one, two, and five is 101. There we go. So simple, easy function to use for converting between different bases. Um, and there's others as well. Um, if you need any sort of mathematical uh, numerical operator or function, uh, MySQL has the standard set that you would get in most programming languages. So I encourage you to go take a minute and uh, run through those, see if there's any that to you uh, are unfamiliar with, and you may just come up across with um, come across a situ situation where that is of value to you in what you're doing. All right, I will leave the links to this page. I will leave the link to the SQL file for you in the description. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. And as always, thanks for watching.